Hey everybody, how's it going? Enjoying a cup, or my final cup of St. Perrin coffee because I've blasted through the entire kilo in about, I think I've only had it for two weeks. I definitely drink way too much coffee. So last week I mentioned I might make a little video about some of the weird and wonderful lockdown creations that we've come up with. Well, here is the very first one. I get my little helper here to help talk us through exactly what everything is. Say good morning. Good morning, it's Sunday morning. 10th of May, should have been the Lincoln Grand Prix today. But anyway, here we are on a day off in my garden. This thing is now our little sun trap, isn't it? So when it's not that warm, you can sit here and it's nice and sheltered. But it started out life as a 1900s, 1910, something like that, a uh, shed. It was someone's summer house come shed. You'll see the rest of it is like dotted around the garden in different places. Hidden it behind the weeds, cleverly. I kind of hope that we could use it as storage space because we don't have a very big house. Blessed with a massive garden, but not indoors, so there's no storage space. We were going to store stuff in the shed. Wouldn't have worked out because I also wanted a train in there. But as you can see, the uh, oops, spill the coffee. The floor, the footprint of the shed, wouldn't have been big enough to do anyway. And actually, it works nicely. It's a little seating area. Sit around the fire pit at night. Let's try and work a few things chronologically, shall we? So when we first moved in, this was all behind a fence, and it was just a piece of wasteland. We asked nicely from the landlord if we could maybe use it for a little bit of a creation. And we've turned it into a pump track. Anyway, the pump track has progressed massively since we've been here. It's been here just over a year now. We've now got a little tiny, a tiny step up. But when you're eight years old or five years old, probably feels massive. What I am proud of though is the berm. We spent hours and hours digging this thing by hand. This is so good in the wet or in the dry. In the wet, you get loads of mud flinging off and it just looks really cool when you make slow-mo videos. I'll try and find some. They were all made before I had a decent camera. In the dry, if you really go for it, proper jump there. Oh, sting nail. In the dry, if you really go for it, you can get a little bit of roost, a little bit of dust flying. This is kind of how we like to relax and just mess around. If you've got a day off, it's quite good fun to burn off a little bit of extra energy. And for him, he can just blast around. He's done, I think his record, he put a little head unit on his bike once, was 12 kilometers around the garden. And it's only like 50 or 60 meters from one end to the other. Only, I appreciate that's unreal but it's just lap after lap and it's so good. He's gotten so good with his bike control. Our daughter didn't even know how to ride a bike until lockdown started actually. It was only then that she decided to finally learn, five and a half. And they just progress so quickly with this sort of thing. It's really cool and I like it as well. It's good for her. So one of my real first lockdown creations was this. And right now it's being used as a bridge and I'm gonna find again some old clips off my phone of when it was a seesaw. So that was the base of the seesaw, just there. You'd ride up onto one side of it and it would teeter over onto the other side, teeter totter seesaw. And it's really good for their balance. It's especially good for their direction of travel and things like that because the way I built it, it's properly wonky. I don't know if you can quite see that there now. And that was, it was good fun. And now it's just a little ramp. It's got a little tiny ramp up onto it. So they get a little speed, a little bit of speed up. I got a lot of speed. And fly down through the middle. I got a teeter totter really cool. speed by just Look at you in your Wiggins jersey. Are you going to do a lap? Now, in the tent behind me, other than having camped in it for one night, it's something really cool, but I'm going to save that for a video on another day. So I'm weirdly quite proud of that. Over here, someone mentioned the other day that I stood at a really weird angle. It's the sort of thing I'd probably do anyway, it's just stand in weird positions and angles. I didn't have a tripod at the time. My camera was mounted on a fence. But since that video, I decided, why not try and create a tripod? So I've got a really cool selfie stick, which screws onto here find a screw in the shed that fits or a bolt in the shed that fits just screw straight onto there stands up sort of straight and even if it's not straight at least it's stable which means it's quite easy to film myself from there pallet fence i love these when we moved house i brought seven seven or eight massive pallets with us i think everyone kind of thought i was a little bit crazy but it's come in so useful because not only that i can now keep all of our old cardboard bike boxes dry behind a pallet door which i'm quite proud of from a distance it looks good anyway it's just like all of my creations. From a distance, they look amazing. Just don't get too close. More repurposed wood. This has been here pretty much since we moved in because it's got the night lights on it. And it was Rich Edmund that stuck this up. Rich Edmund, if you've ever watched my meet the presenter video that I did previously at my old job, he was the first person that ever got me into cycling. And he's also the first person to mount nighttime lighting in my garden. Cheers, Rich. And the rest of my amazing creation of a pallet wood fence. Climb up in there. Yeah. 
it's a bit of an insult to tree houses worldwide but it's a little place where they can sit and have a snack i mean it's not going to keep them dry but they seem to enjoy it every now and again you come out and you find teddies and all sorts in there you like hoarding stuff up there don't you you like hiding stuff there you go big jump as well and then finally is this it started out live as the tabletop and landing for one of the plastic jump ramps that we got down there but now it's used as a start ramp and like a warm-up so he sends himself a bit of pedals and all of us do it to be honest down through the garden picking up a little bit of speed for free before then going into the pump track doing a lap as fast as possible and coming back out right our latest creation is going to be the manual machine isn't it yep hopefully anyway it's going to be the most rudimentary manual machine you've ever seen made purely out of scrap wood that we could find but it's going to be good fun when we get it going wood from my old bed yeah, wood from your old bed, which I made and you never liked because it was actually too high for you, wasn't it? Yeah, a bit too high. That's the trouble when a parent like dictates what's like happening. You prefer the new bed. Your new bed's twice as high, but you're also twice as old, so that explains that. Right, here we go. I like it so Pretty happy with that. Many hours of fun ahead, I reckon. So, two planks from a big pallet and loads of little sawn pieces that we had left lying around. About 20 screws. This probably costs like a pound to build. Handy little carry handle. The only thing we have to do now is find a nice little flat piece on the lawn, which proves to be the hardest part of this task, and have a little go. Whoa, I'm gonna get off the back. <laughs> you gonna have a go? Yeah. Come of on. Course. It's quite high. You feel like you go from the front there and then you tip over the back there. So that's the place you need to try and hold it. Mrs. Opie versus the manual machine. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! <laughs> right, next up, I'm gonna show you some clips from the week. We've been for our first ever family bike ride, which was really quite special. I had loads of help with the filming for a few of the pictures that I've been taking recently and also that new intro. I'm sorry, so a bit dry too. Yeah, I bet. I need a drink. So we've done a run. 5.7k, 31 minutes. I don't know if any of you run, but it is the most disgusting thing ever. The first 20 minutes feels like I've never run before in my life, even though I've done a little bit. And then after that 20 minutes, I'm too tired to enjoy the rest of it, even though I sort of found my flow. Safe to say we've run out of ways to keep our kids entertained during lockdown. So, it's now family bike wash time. Look at these guys go. Micah, how's it going? You want to be entertained as well? Oh, I think it looks good. Doesn't matter what anyone else says. From a distance, you can't see it's dirty. You're a bit wet. How did you get wet? You've been washing bikes as well? It's not for everyone, all this playing in the water. Hello. Hello. You know it's relaxed, don't you? You do. <laughs> Go away. Oh wow, you've actually done a really good job. You've got a very silver chain. It was black, wasn't it? I always thought you only had a black chain. Did you do a before and after? We'll just say it was really bad, shall we? So we thought for a bit of a laugh, we come out and all film together. Try and get some nice shots that I can't possibly get on my own, even with the world's biggest selfies. My little support crew. Without them, it would not be possible. Hey everyone, if you've made it to this point in the video, well done, I'm impressed. It's quite different from the other videos that I've put out so far, but this is my life, my life away from bikes. The sort of thing I get up to on what was a sunny Sunday morning anyway. It's turned to rain now, I've just come out from lunch and realised I've left loads of stuff outside, I've got to pack away. If this is, if this is the sort of video you enjoy watching, please do let me know because I can definitely make quite a few more of these. These are mega easy, just walk around with a camera in my hand. Coming up this week, I've got another one of those 360 rides. And the key thing to remember with those is if you're gonna watch it, you need to either watch it on YouTube's proper app, so not via a link that you've opened on your phone, but via the proper app. That way you can pick the phone up and scroll around the screen or on your computer, or you can drag it around with the mouse. That's the, that's the best way to get the most out of those videos. 
And then hopefully with a little bit of luck, I've got a delivery on the way, which I've been really excited about. I've got something very similar to what is coming already here, but it's very different at the same time. And I cannot wait to show you what that is. Massive thank you to the response so far. It's amazing to have so many subscribes and likes and shares and comments in the first week. I really do appreciate it. And it's a great motivator to help me keep making these videos. Hopefully I'll see you again soon.